Polycythemia vera, or PV, is what uh, the topic is for uh, this video. And uh, pilo, uh, polycythemia vera is what you uh, call a myeloproliferative disorder. And what this is really referring to is the proliferation of um, cell, blood cell lines. So which blood cells are we talking about? We're talking about red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. And these are the three lines of um, blood cells that are increased in number in PV, polycythemia vera. Uh, just really quick uh, before we get into all the symptoms, mm, happens more commonly in men. The mean age is about 60. And most of the questions on the licensing exams are actually talking about what happens because of the increased red blood cells. So I wanted to quickly touch on those things. So what are some of the symptoms? Well, interestingly, for the most part, there really are no symptoms. A lot of them are asymptomatic cases, but if there are symptoms, the most common one on, on a clinical vignette will be itching or pruritus after a hot shower or bath. And that's a very key one. Uh, there's other ones that are um, also very important, like splenomegaly, enlargement of the spleen that you can palpate. Um, that's also very common um, on presentations. There's some nonspecific uh, symptoms as well, but these are the two big ones. Now, why is this important? If we're still talking about symptomatology, why is polycythemia vera important? The reason is because when you have an increased red blood cell mass, what that means is you have an increased hematocrit. And hematocrit, as many of you know, is the percentage of blood that's red blood cells. And this can lead to something known as hyperviscosity. And hyperviscosity is essentially making the patient prone to blood clots or thrombosis. So that's really the reason why polycythemia vera can become uh, a problem. And the thrombosis can have some pretty devastating effects. It can cause a lot of significant problems, uh, which include a stroke, CVA, also known as CVA, it can cause a trans transient ischemic attack. Uh, it can cause a deep venous thrombosis, DVT. And then it can also cause a heart attack, a myocardial infarction. So these are very important to remember as the possible outcome of having uh, polycythemia vera and having an increased red blood cell count and an increased hematocrit, basically. So how do you diagnose this? Well, of course, the complete blood count is going to be um, your main test, and this is a relatively inexpensive test. And what you're looking at are the hemoglobin and the hematocrit. Um, I can write it out. Hemoglobin level and the hematocrit. Um, for a man, the hemoglobin, if it's greater than 18.5, or for a woman, greater than 16.5. Uh, for hematocrit, for a man, greater than 45, and probably greater than 42 for a woman. These are very high values, um, and this will definitely lead to a diagnosis um, of polycythemia. Other tests that are um, important that can lead to this diagnosis is something known as an erythropoietin level. Um, erythropoietin is a, a precursor to red blood cell protection. Now, in polycythemia vera, this actually, through because of negative feedback, um, the erythropoietin levels will actually be low. 
because you have such high red blood cell counts that there's a process of negative feedback that occurs that makes these erythropoietin counts low. So that's a classic scenario now on, a, on the lab tests to point to this. So how do you treat it? There's three uh, main things. The first thing is you give aspirin actually and that is to uh, reduce the incidence of the thrombos thrombosis or thrombotic complications because we all know aspirin helps prevent blood clots. The next uh, part is you do a phlebotomy. Phlebotomy essentially is just uh, removing blood from the body the, the, with the goal of getting the hematocrit down. And uh, the final one is giving um, myelosuppressive drugs. Now remember this was a myeloproliferative disorder so you give a myelosuppressive drug and the most common drug is hydroxyurea. So those are the three fundamental aspects of uh, treatment of polycythemia vera. So let's take a look at some clinical vignettes. 55 year old white male comes to your office with weakness and headache. He has also described annoying pruritus that occurs frequently after he takes a hot shower. Physical exam is remarkable for the presence of an enlarged spleen, splenomegaly. He has a hemoglobin level of 21, hematocrit of 63. To confirm your clinical diagnosis, you obtain additional studies. Which of the following would be most consistent with the most likely diagnosis? Well, this clinical vignette, you know, he's got the classic pruritus after a hot shower. He's got the splenomegaly, very high hemoglobin. 2163 for hematocrit and the normal values are given there. So he definitely has polycythemia vera. Now remember I had talked about how erythropoietin, also abbreviated EPO, because of the increased RBC levels, there will be a negative feedback mechanism that goes back and tells the body to not produce erythropoietin in normal levels anymore. So the erythropoietin level will be low. And the answer, therefore, is A. Uh, last one. A 38-year-old man comes to the office with increasing lethargy and fatigue over the past year. Generally healthy, no significant past medical history, denies any shortness of breath, weight loss, or feelings of sadness or depression. He continues to be very active, exercises four to five times a week. Full neurologic and physical exam is unremarkable. There's no clubbing or cyanosis. 12 lead EKG and chest radiograph appear normal. Blood work is remarkable for a hematocrit of 59, and you call him to tell the to tell the results. He should be told that he is high risk for. Um, well, a very high hematocrit basically um, is what it does is it makes the blood more viscous, so the viscosity increases, also known as hyperviscosity. And hyperviscosity can lead to thrombosis, blood clots. And thrombosis can further lead, uh, can cause quite a few things. They can cause a DVT, they can cause a stroke, uh, also known as CVA, they can cause a mini stroke, also known as a transient ischemic attack, and they can also cause a heart attack, known as myocardial infarction. So let's see if one of these is the right choice stroke right here. So the answer is E. A stroke is also known as a CVA, cerebrovascular accident.